Hey, hello again. I'm at Wright Park in Tacoma. Beautiful old park with lots of giant, regal old trees. I've been wanting to get down here and paint some of these trees for a while. Finally had a day where I had a few hours to come down and do a quick painting. I'm dropping some paintings off at Proctor Art Gallery here in Tacoma in the Proctor District, kind of the old district of Tacoma. It's a nice little neighborhood. It's a lovely little gallery. I usually have some work in there. If you're ever in Tacoma and you'd like to see some work in person, art is always better in person. Drop in and check it out. People there are really friendly. Well, here's a scene I'm going to paint. Beautiful Japanese maple over a pond with a fountain. Lots of things to choose from there. I like the way the sun is hitting that maple with the new leaves. The leaves are a really beautiful range of pinks and rusty reds and apricot. Nice spring growth. The tree shape itself is beautiful with some variety. I like that little white statue, the marble statue on the island there. And I can even Get a little reflection of the tree and the statue in the water. Now I can't see the reflection very well from where I'm standing here. I backed up a bit to get away from the noise of the fountains and also to get out of the path so I'm not blocking the path while I paint. But I can invent as much of the reflection as I want. I may not include much, I may just focus on the, the shape of the tree. So I'll get set up. I'm going to do a little 9 by 12 using a Centurion oil primed linen panel today. As usual I've got my one third lines marked out on the panel. I just use that initially to help me get everything I want on the sketch. Especially if it's a architectural form or something challenging to draw like a boat. I find those one-third lines really helpful. Now in this scene, you can take a lot of liberty with a tree, and as long as you keep some basics in mind, it's going to read tree. So I, I don't even know if I'll use the, the one-third lines today. I just mark them on there to have them if I need them. Pretty typical colors out today. Every black, Rembrandt cold gray, titanium white, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, sap green, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Blizzard and Crimson, Cad Red, Cad Yellow, Windsor Lemon, Yellow Ochre. We've got Artist Turpentine here, uh, Liquin here, Gamsol here. So I'll mix the colors using just a little bit of Liquin and maybe a little bit of Turpentine as well just to get the right consistency. Room temperature butter. It's thick enough that it sticks to my vertical palette here but not so stiff that I, I can't move quickly as I'm painting. Got big piles out, lots of paint. I won't need all that, but I don't like to stop and get out more if I run out. Now, it's supposed to start raining a little bit this afternoon. Not heavy, but I'd like to get done before the rain comes in. So I'm gonna move kind of quick, which is why I'm going with a, a 9x12, a little smaller panel. I've been reading a great old book the Artistic Anatomy of Trees by Rex Vcat Cole. I'm not all the way through it yet. I've been studying it and making sketches along the way, taking notes. What he really encourages is to try to capture the whole shape of the tree. So not every branch, not every leaf, but the thing as a whole. So looking at that beautiful maple tree, I can see that it has a right leaning slant to it. The tallest branches up into the sky are not directly over the stump where it enters the ground. So I want to make sure I capture that, that it's kind of leaning over that statue. But it's counterbalanced by some beautiful limbs on the left side and that ball-like shape of branches, the main body of the tree, tree branches, the leaves, 
down below. It's an oval and it's heavy and tall on the left hand side. So there's a beautiful symmetry to it. It doesn't feel like it's tipping at all. It feels like it's well balanced somehow over the base, over the stump, while having that rightward lean. So I want to capture that. I also want to be really graphic and give those branches some flair. As I'm drawing, I want to really concentrate on giving those beautiful tree branches suppleness. They're thicker at the base, they get thinner as they go up, so I really want to concentrate on that. So to help me with that today, I'm going to put down the wash first, and then I'll sketch on top of that. I'll sketch those branches in, and then paint from there. I'll mix my colors first, set those aside, especially when the sun is hitting the tree. It may cloud up and I may lose that sun, so I'm going to go ahead and mix the colors while I have that light on the tree. I quickly mixed up some colors. I've got the deepest blue of the sky. You can see it's still a really high value compared to the other, color, other colors I mixed. As it moves down the sky it becomes a little more lavender and then pretty yellow and very bright right at the horizon. This is just the same value but a little warmer, a little more red added. I think I added alizarin crimson and yellow ochre to that to give it more of a peach value. Some of the clouds especially I'm seeing um, have this kind of nice peach color. I can add some straight white as well if I need to to pick out the highlights on the clouds. And I've got the background tree colors here. This is the darkest value. This is the value of the trunks. You can see it's not as dark as the value for the trunk of the maple tree in the foreground. This is the foliage, more blue, more yellow, different greens, different shades of green, more blue, more yellow, a little darker, a little lighter. And these are the colors I mixed up for the maple tree. I've got the trunk values, red, blue, dark, a little lighter red-gray and lighter still. And at the very end I can dip into maybe that color if I want to pick out some highlights on the trunk of the of the maple tree. And we've got the foliage in the shadow. There's more blue cooler tones and more red warmer tones. And then the light on the leaves and the bulk of the leaves a little bluer red, a little more orange red, and a little higher value. This is this should be the highest value for the leaves. When you look out at the scene, it looks like a little lighter value than that when the sun's on it, but it's really not when I hold my knife up against it. It's just not as high value as even the sky. Now I may push that a little bit later if the painting doesn't pop, but for now I just want to go with what I'm actually observing. Then I've got some separate colors here mixed up for the statue. I'm pushing the shadow side of the statue a little bit toward the purple, a little more reddish purple. I can also dip into this and maybe just some straight ultramarine blue for the bluer shadows on the statue. And then a highlight color for the statue which is just a little lighter than the lightest value of the sky. So as I'm painting with these all dip into other colors. I'll mix some of these colors to get a harmony. Um, if something is jumping out too much, I'll dip into maybe a gray or one of these grayer colors I mix to tone it down a bit. I'm just shift things around, try to match what I'm seeing. I use this bristle brush with just a little bit of turpentine and very roughly sketch the composition first before I do the wash so I know kind of roughly where to place the wash. I want to put the center of interest maple tree. I want to put the maple tree leaning from the center of the panel down to this 
vertical one-third line and have it come to just below this horizontal one-third line. That's the trunk of the maple. And it has an, a beautiful oval mass for the, the leaves. Comes over and almost goes off the panel. kind of broken here. This oval shape, very beautiful oval shape. It has kind of a flare out here. That's nice. Kind of want to capture the gesture of the tree. All right, that's kind of the gesture of the maple. And as I'm painting, I want to I want to realize that this branch is coming out toward me, so there's some there's some perspective going on here. If the main horizon is down here about eye level, the vanishing point's going to be maybe somewhere over here. So everything is kind of going to be radiating things coming toward me and receding will be radiating along those vanishing points. There's also a vanishing point off this way. So trees, buildings, everything follow those vanishing points when you're trying to draw realistically with perspective. I'm glad I brought my heavy coat. It's chilly in the shade here, even though it's almost the end of April. It's kind of a chilly day. background trees something like that something simple I don't want this to be exactly the same as this a little island and then the statue will be right in here tiny little thing from this viewpoint I'll, I'll redraw it after I do the wash. I just kind of wanted to place that so I could hit it with a little bit of yellow ochre as I erase that white out. It should get a nice glow then. Oh, this is all going to be very simple, simplified in the painting, but that's the bank of the pond. And then the farther the visible trunk of this big tree. Okay, that's good enough. Now I can a little bigger bristle brush and do the tripping ten one. Very light cerulean blue wash for the sky. Looks like my brush was dirty from the last painting, that's okay. I'm gonna erase most of that anyway. Now a little bit of yellow ochre for the background trees. For the pond itself, I'll go back to cerulean. Actually, I'm gonna add a little bit of cad yellow in the pond. It's got a nice glow. And then finally, the lizard and crimson for the tree. I'm going to carve into this a little bit with the sky. I can see the sky through the branches, the leaves of the trees. I'm going to hint at that just a little bit. I'm going to work that setup just a little bit. I'm also going to take a small brush and wipe away the lightest lights 
the white of the statue and the white of the stones on the bank of the pond. I'm not going to try to do a detailed drawing of this statue. It's too small, too fiddly to worry about it too much in a plein air painting. I'm just going to suggest the form. If you'd like to see an extended version of this video, jump over to my Patreon page. It's a great way to support the channel and you get a lot of extra videos and information over there. Link is in my description below. Alright, I also want to wipe away some of the highlighted branches on the tree. Like this branch where it's coming toward me. I'm just going to wipe a little of that away to suggest the foliage catching light. Trying to get the gesture of these boughs of leaves for now. I want to leave a nice dark shadow pattern as well. I don't want to erase all of it and I want to connect it with the trunk and the branches. I'm just kind of brush off some of those drips. Okay, that's good. I can still see my statue. I can still see the trunk of the tree, at least the start of it. See the major shape, the big shape of the maple. A little bit of burnt umber and some gamsol. And sketch this tree I'm using a bristle brush. If this bristle brush isn't fine enough, I'll, I'll try it with a smaller evergreen. This is the heart of the painting, so I want to do a good job on this drawing. Shift with ultramarine blue and a lizard and crimson and capture some of the color shifts I'm seeing. I'm going to put the lid on the gamsol and open the lid on this little gamsol cup. That way, if, if the Easel does get tipped, I won't lose that whole big can of gamsol. Got a little gamsol in there already. Alright, using this number seven rosemary evergreen. Nice brush, it's getting kind of broken in. I start with the higher value, the lighter value of the sky. I'll wet it, my brush with a little bit of gamsol first. Start with this highest yellowish value of the sky. I'm not seeing a lot of cloud shapes at the moment. I may suggest some down in here. I want to cover the canvas as quickly and loosely as I can. Nice thin layer and let that start to tack up a bit and then as I come over with subsequent layers, later layers, it'll stick to that little bit drier paint more easily. This greenish yellow I'm putting in for the sky is going to set off nicely against the reddish pinkish apricot tones of the of the main interest tree. Now I'll try this natural hair master's choice number four from Rosemary. And painting those background deciduous trees. Always keeping the direction of the sun in mind. The sun is over my right shoulder, so any faces coming out this way should be brighter. Anything away from that should be more in shadow. And I want to keep the background really subtle. I'm going to paint in behind where I think the maple tree is going to go. I don't want to cover up all the sky. It's a little bit challenging, a little bit scary painting around the center of interest maple tree here. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to make it difficult to paint the tree in, but I want to get enough background color down that when I paint the maple foliage in, I don't have a lot of gaps to worry about. I can always come back in with my leftover color and 
paint in some of those gaps so it's better to keep it thin and to leave some leave more gaps than you think you'll need there's no right way to do this I, I'm just explaining my approach any artist will need to put in the hours and the time to figure out what works for them and in doing so you'll you'll develop your your style the sunlight on the ground there has a nice warmth a little lighter than the leaves on the tree some of these rocks have that same nice warmth as well clean the paint off a little bit with my palette knife and paint the reflection of the statue in the water. Now, water reflections are usually less than, so if this is white, then this is less white. If this is dark, then the reflection will be less dark. large soft natural hair brush and just brush it down gently. I'll keep wiping off the brush on the paper towel, knock down the any of the tall ridges that I have so far in the paint. I want to keep things really smooth. I'm not trying to blend, I'm just trying to knock down any ridges in the paint that I put down so far. I'll take another natural hair brush, rosemary master's choice, and start to paint the foliage. The fun part now, so I'm going to start with the most vibrant, highest value color and dab that in. I'm not going to paint every leaf, I'm just going to paint the shapes, big shapes I'm seeing. I'll go with the highest value first, and then I'll paint the darker values around those highest values and I can just follow the, the pattern that I laid in initially during the temp turpentine wash. If my, if my colors start to get muddy I can wipe my brush off on a paper towel keep those keep these colors clean. I don't want to overdo the, the highest values. I want to keep the darks connected. Add just a little bit of white toward the top of this highest value just to give a little bit of subtle value shift. I can even add a little bit of yellow, which is also high value. Later in the studio, when this is more dry, I can add a few more touches of clean color out here, but I don't want to overdo that right now. I'm just going to go for big shapes. I'm not going to paint individual leaves, I can, but I can add those later in the studio to finish it off if I think it needs it. Nice sound of a red-winged blackbird occasionally in the distance. A 
love these natural hair brushes for this. They, they give you a nice, random, very soft stroke. Okay, those are the highest values, the lightest values of the foliage. Now I need to go in around it and paint in the darker values. Using that same brush without cleaning it, just going right into the darker values. Now again, I don't want to cover up everything behind it. I want to leave some of the sky and leave some of the deciduous trees. just want to suggest the foliage. Maybe step back occasionally and take a look at how it's shaping up. See, I'm cutting back into that now with some of the background color with all those nice soft edges. Really makes that red pop. I'm just kind of stepping back once in a while and seeing what I need to add. I can see that I need to add a little bit of weight to the tree here to balance it. And there is a little there is a small branch up there. All right, now I just want to go back in and reestablish the trunk of the main tree there, the maple tree there. There's a small evergreen round for that. And then I'll throw a little bit of paint on the statue and I think I'll be done for here. Maybe throw a little bit more paint on the water.
Well, here's where it ended up. 9 by 12 inch oil on linen. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result. I think it has the feel of the place and of that tree. It's a little messy, this little rock wall got a little messy, but that's okay. I can easily clean that up in the studio. I think the statue became the center of interest because of the strong contrast. Um, I'm not sure about that. I may change it, may dull it down, may keep it. Take it back to the studio, touch it up a little bit after it dries. I think I'll cut some additional sky holes in to make that a little bit lacier up top. Also cut in a little more green and a little a few more sky holes in the body here to separate this mass from this mass. But otherwise I think it's pretty close. Met some nice people here, had a really nice time. It's a beautiful old park. There's a ton of trees here to paint. I'll touch it up a bit in the studio and throw it out on my website. As always, thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit my website. I sell these little plain air pieces at a reasonable price because I consider them practice. It really makes me happy when someone likes my art enough that they want to hang it in their home. You can also sign up for my newsletter and stay up to date on my new work and shows and get a discount on original art and prints.